I want you to have a look at this question. I wonder how many of you recognize it. Uh, what year is this, Stefan? 2015? Yeah, okay. So, um, the question is just solved. The question is just solved. Okay. What are we going to do with this? Well, the first thing you want to recognize is, well, as a log question, the first most important information you're going to draw on is your log laws. Right? That's the basic piece. So when you have a look, for example, at the left-hand side, what log law does that trigger in your mind? When you're adding logs, you multiply the parts inside, right? So this should be log base 2 of what? X plus 2, X plus 3, which of course is? Right? Okay. And then you've got this guy over on the right hand side. Okay. Now because you have now combined those two log terms on the left hand side, you've got a single log on the left and a single log on the right. Right? So, being that these are equal to each other, you don't need to write the logs anymore. Log of something and the same base of something, I can just write this. <coughs> equals minus 2x. Are you happy with that? Okay. So, you've used your log laws to combine things, but now that you have... This is exactly the same as when you see an equation like this. Right? In this case, you would write the right-hand side with the same base as the left-hand side. And having successfully done that, you're like, well, I don't need the base of 3 anymore. I would just say x equals 2. Make sense? So here, I don't need the logs anymore. Log of this, log of that, it's all the same. Now what? Uh, bring, bring it plus 2x. Uh, you're going to add 2x to those sides. No bringing, there's no moving things around. It's an equation. So you're doing the same thing to both sides. I'm adding 2x to both sides. Like so. And now you completely turn this question into a quadratic question, haven't you? So you can factorize this, of course. It's and then that gives you a pair of solutions, namely x minus one. Okay. Now at this point, in a rush, you're like, sweet, next question, off I go. Okay. However, I slightly lied to you. Oh yeah, this is the part I was At this line here, I said, I said. Oh, we've changed this question completely into a quadratic question. Yeah, but no, because this part looks like a quadratic question, but where the question began was a log question, and that stuff hasn't gone away, right? You have to account for this. So how does that affect, how does that affect this? Think about this, and this is what makes this a good question. There is implied in the first line, even though it's not stated, there is implied a domain restriction, right? If I showed you this, log base two of x, and I said, can you graph this? If I asked you to graph this, then the domain restriction is kind of at the forefront of your mind because you know what this picture looks like, do you not? What does it look like? Yeah, it's just got that gentle curve that you can see, right? So the domain restriction is right there on the face of it. What is the domain restriction, by the way? It's x is greater greater than zero, right? And it's not inclusive of the boundary, it never gets there because there's an asymptote, a vertical asymptote. So far, so good. Now, you have a look at up here, and um, you don't have log base two of x, but you have related cousins to log base two of x, right? This guy is just like log base two of x, with one exception. It's been shifted two units to the left, hasn't it? So if this is log base two of x, then, um, let's be really, really cheap. <laughs> wow. That is log base 2 of x plus 2. Is that okay? Now, do you notice, because it's now all in terms of x plus 2, not x, this is the new domain restriction. Yeah? So, therefore, x is greater than not 0, but negative 2. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay? There's a restriction here x is greater than negative 2. Okay. There's also a restriction here. What is it? However, interestingly, right, you're adding these two things together. So it doesn't matter if one exists, but the other doesn't. Like, the whole thing doesn't exist if one of the pieces explodes. Okay. So therefore, even though this is greater than negative 3, which is uh, over here, like that, right? Do you notice that on this little portion here, this graph doesn't exist? Does that make sense? So therefore, 
This guy doesn't exist, which means you can't add up when there's like a defined thing and an undefined thing. Okay? So actually, this piece over here is worthless to me. Okay? Even though this applies to this, this is what you need to get both of them. Does that make sense? So I'm going to underline that one to emphasize that's the important one. Okay? There's one more long term, which means there's one more domain restriction. Have a look. It's not like base 2 of x. Uh, it's log base 2 of minus 2x. What does that do? Think. Think. What does it do? Eric, what do you say? It means x has to be negative. Okay. The domain restriction I get from here is x is less than 0. The question is why. Okay. Think back. Right. When I told you you've got a function like this, and then I said, hey, what about this? What's the relationship between these two? And the answer is you've done a flip, a reflection. What direction have you flipped in? You've done it horizontally, right? Because x is about horizontal values, yes? So therefore, this guy here looks like log base 2 of 2x, except, except he's gone from this side, and now he's just flipped right over to that side. Okay? So here was my log base 2 of x plus 2 graph. Here's what the other one looks like. So my scale's gonna be terrible, but it's gonna go that way. It's gonna go in the other direction. Okay. So now this is a bit of a disastrous mess because I wasn't asked to graph, so this doesn't look very good. But in order for this equation to mean anything, then all three of these have to exist. Does that make sense? There's only one little section where all three exist. It's to the left of here, and then I have to stop there. Do you see that? Uh, obviously, if I look to the right, you've got these two, but you don't have this one. If I go any further than here, you get these two, but not that one. I, I want all of them. Okay? This section here is the only one where I get all of them. So therefore, the real restriction that applies to this whole question is this. Uh, whoops. Sorry. Right? Negative 2 is the left boundary. And zero is the right boundary. So now when you have a look at this, you can see not all of the solutions that we've found through our quadratic meet these conditions. Only one of them does, namely this guy. So the way I would say it is, but uh, this restriction is in place. Therefore, x is negative 1 only, as negative 6 is outside the domain. Do you get x equals negative 1 or negative 6? That's like one mark. The rest of it is like the two marks left. Is that just finding out the restriction? Is this a three mark question? Yeah. I'd almost certainly say 1, 2, 3. Almost so. Might have been lenient and let people have the mark there because that's the use of a log law. But I'd hope that you'd get to that. Can we just put the numbers in and not? Just evaluate them. Because all this question, yeah, all this question was was solve. Uh, the short answer is yes. However, I'm, I'm sort of pushing on that because at certain points you don't you don't want to just be sort of brought back down to just brute forcing. Oh, let's just let's just try it. Okay, you want to be able to think about this thing. For example, I could have said graph this and this and then graph this and then followed on with this question, right? In which case you need to understand all this stuff anyway. Or I could have said, give me the domain restriction on this. Or give me the domain restriction on this. And that would have been a different kind of question that you can't just simply plug values into. You need to understand this. So short answer, yes. But I still think this is a helpful thing to have in your head.